वसुधैव कुटुंबक Good morning to all the teachers and young girls. I am extremely, extremely emotional when I stand here. I was telling, ma'am, you know, it's always so good to come back to your school, and you know, every nook and corner has memories associated. So, thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity. <laughs> I was uh, 1997 passed out. I passed out in 1997, so I'm sure that's like long, long back. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you so very much, and thank you so very much, ma'am, for giving us this opportunity to get this book here. Uh, this book to you here is because of this little initiative called Muskan. Muskan um, is a joint initiative of Prabha Khetan Foundation and Education for All Trust, and it is supported by Sri Cement Limited as their CSR initiative. So, what is Prabha Khetan Foundation? I'm the honorary convener of Prabha Khetan Foundation, and I look after Central India and Rajasthan. Prabha Khetan Foundation is dedicated to all-round development of socio-cultural welfare and humanitarian aspects of the Indian society. It is a not-for-profit which was founded by late Dr. Prabha Khetanji. Prabha Khetanji was an eminent uh, author, philanthropist, social worker, and an industrialist. Based in Kolkata, the organization promotes art, culture, literature of India, and is engaged in many welfare activities with its associates for children, women, and the elderly. The organization collaborates with caregivers committed individuals and like-minded institutions to implement various cultural, educational, literary and social welfare projects in the country. So Muskan, as I said, was a joint initiative of Prabha Khetan Foundation and Education for All Trust. And this was founded in June 2021. And uh, the main aim of founding Muskan was to promote skill development among children 
through webinars, courses, workshops and interactions like these. Muskan seeks to popularize and teach arts, culture, heritage and literature among the young children in India by weaving it into the formal and informal education system. We believe that education, the formal system is very very important. So is the informal way of learning and today when you go back you must have learned so much. You will learn how it is important to see and look at the different aspects whether it is an adversity, whether it's an opportunity, the best could be made out of it. So uh, Muskan generally engages students in diverse activities like cultural programs, storytelling, theater, dance, music and performing arts and it is in collaboration with the national institutes and international associations. Muskan is also helping and supporting the needy and the marginalized students by providing with them the tuition and the coaching fees, the stationaries, etc. So all these activities, this is just the starting of the uh, physical activities of Muskan. We do a lot of activities through Zoom and I think ma'am is also a part of that uh, group. So yes, now from now onwards we will be getting more activities. So enjoy, participate, learn, assimilate. Thank you so very much. Thank you, ma'am. May I request Madam Principal and Ms. Abra to kindly take their place in the audience. Thank you, Jita. I now invite Ms. Shruti Rastogi and Mariam Chauhan to the stage to further proceed with the session. Good morning, everyone. It's an absolute delight to welcome Ms. Vani Tripathi Tipu. Um, I'm sure you're as excited as both of us are here to know more about her book. The name of the book itself is so special. I'm sure it has brought a lot of curiosity to your mind. Why can't elephants be red? Have you ever thought about it? Have you thought about it? Why can't elephants be red? So that's what the art of a writer is all about. Man could think, why can't elephants be red? And I'll brief you a little about the book, that the book is about a small little girl like you. And she also thinks like you think most of the times. Why can't elephants be red? And why is it that things have the color that they have? Why can it not be otherwise? So. Um, I would like to hand over the mic to Ms. Vani and just begin with a very simple question which I think we all have. What is your favorite part of the book? And if you could please read out something from the book. You know, we know you have authored. All right, ma'am. No problem. So we can, you know, we'll wait to read something from the book. But uh, to begin with, uh, I think we all are very curious that you have you know, uh, taken on many roles in life. Ma'am has been an actor, a politician, a producer, uh, and now a writer. So we really want to know, you know, which is this role of all that defines you to the fullest. Thank you so much and uh, thank you uh, Mrs. Bankutia Ji. Can I also call you Manpotia Jija? <laughs> well, uh, I'm very happy to be here at MGD this morning. And I must tell you that I also have a Rajasthan connection. All my masses, my aunts were all in Rajasthan. I think the eldest one was an MGD girl. I'll find out more which year uh, she passed out. So one of my uh, masses used to teach in Mayo College, the other one in Banasthali and the youngest one in Bits Pilani. And my whole uh, uh, Amma's, my mother's family uh, was all Rajasthan based. My Nana was the principal of a government school, a government, I think, college, girls' college here, many moons ago. So in a way, it's ghar vapsi for me too, not just Apra who's come back to um, MGD. 
and I'm so happy to be here to see these beautiful young smiling faces. Breakfast kaya hai subay? Yes, ma'am. Seriously kaya hai? Yes, ma'am. So, ek baar ye bata do ki kitab ka title kya hai? Why can't elephants be? Red. Very good. So, first I will want to answer uh, why did I write this book? What was the journey of the book? Um, every book has a journey. And uh, because we are a land of storytellers, we are katha vachaks, all of us get inspired. Like today you will go and tell a story about me, you will go home, somebody will ask you or you will meet a friend and then you will say we met this author and she has written this book called Why Can't Elephants Be Read? So there is a story to it. But my book is unique because it has a double journey. It is a double journey because the first journey is the title Why Can't Elephants Be Read? When I used to work in the National School of Drama. The last play I did at the Theatre Education Company which used to work with young people like you. And we used to do theatre and we used to work in education. So the last play I did was called Lal Lal Hati. And for many years I became Everybody forgot that my name was Vani Tripathi. I was not a Tikku then, I became a Tikku later, which is my married surname. But everybody used to call me Lal Lal Hathi. And why was Lal Lal Hathi so unique, I will tell you. But before that, everybody knows who Nawazuddin Siddiqui is? Yes, ma'am. Sure? Yes, ma'am. So he was my senior in drama school. We were very close friends and just recently when he was shooting for this famous series, Sacred Games, I was there on the set, you know, wanting to do something with him later. He said, Jara, phone lagao. I said, Samne to vet you, phone kyo lagao? He said, Jara, lagao to. So I dialed his number and you know what was blinking on his phone? Any guess? Lala So I said, you're so bad, you still call me Lala Hathi. So he said, because you are the eternal Lal Hathi of our lives. And I will tell you why this Lal Hathi was so unique. This play was about a little boy, or it could be a little girl, who was very pissaddi in school. <laughs> yeah, she didn't, she didn't get very good grades, but got, was very good in art. So one day, he drew a red elephant in the art class. If there are any art teachers, you will forgive me for telling this story. And the art teacher got very angry, very mad at this little boy. He said, elephants are black or they are grey or they are sometimes white. How can elephants be red? So the boy waged a very polite but a firm debate with the teacher. And he said to the teacher that your elephant is black and grey and sporadically white, but my elephant is red. If I can accept your elephant to be whatever color they are, why can't you expect my, accept my elephant to be red? And the moment I used to say this, he used to say this, I used to pop out of a school bag in a red velvet costume with very big ears. And I used to actually walk up to the students and I used to say, can you see me? What is the answer they used to give? Yes. Both the breakfast ka kya aate the, aap breakfast ka kya? Can you see me? Yes. But you know, then what I used to ask them? I used to ask them, but you know what? That guy at the back cannot see me. All across the world, thousands of shows we did of this play. Every single young person in the audience, you are all young people, right? We'll also talk about why I call you young people. They said, because he does not want to see. And what was the meaning of this one line? I think, tell me, there's a hand up. Somebody put a hand up. What was the meaning of this one line? Any guess? Tell me. To see things in a particular Very good. We constantly define things. We constantly, you want to say this on the mic? <clears throat> uh, it is 
because uh, we want to see things in a particular way and sometimes we forget that we can use our creativity and our imagination to imagine things in a certain way it is not always compulsory to uh, see the things as they are. Full marks. Two words she used. Beautiful words. Two words she used, beautiful words are creativity and imagination. I think most adults including people like me, do everything to kill the creative imagination of children around us. We either talk down to them, Hey, tumko kya pata hai? Tumko kuch pata hai? Dei kira tumko. Chalo. Or, we bark orders at them. Uto, kamera dress karo, khana khao, jute polish karo. I'm not saying there's anything wrong in discipline. We all should have discipline. I'm a theater actor by profession and later film, if I was not disciplined, I would not have gotten this way, but does discipline mean defining things only according to your own mind, which is the mind of an adult? And you know what happens over the years? We forget our childhood. We forget our childhood. The joys and the sorrows and the challenges and the opportunities of being a young person. And you know why I call you young people? Because you are extremely observant people. It is our malaise, our fault, our malfunctioned adult minds that refuse to see this beautiful observation that you have about life around us. So that is the first reason of why can't elephants be read. I think we'll keep our red elephants alive because that is the only thing which will keep us imaginative and creative. The second journey is personal. I think we all have just come out of the worst holocaust of our lives, the pandemic, COVID. I'm the only child of two academic parents and my mother is totally bedridden. So during COVID, I was with Amma, my mother, in Delhi. And my daughter, who was two years old at that time, was with my husband and my in-laws in Singapore. Second wave came. People did not make it. So many friends, relatives did not make it, you know, out of the pandemic. And Singapore shut down. And I could not see my daughter for two years. So I took a virtual journey with my child. The 12 chapters of the book are these 12 beautiful people, a large Indian fat Kashmiri family. Families which came together during COVID to look after each other. So every chapter of the book is 12 people, 12 real people who are a part of Akshara, my daughter, who we lovingly call Akku and her life. So what man just said, yes, it is a two and a half year old, wide-eyed amazement at the adult world. But little, little kids like you all are very receptive. They are very observant. They probably don't communicate with us the way we communicate. We all come to us. We have so many words. Or itni sari baate hai. But the children communicate in so many ways. So this is also an ode to the resilience of children and the way she remained without a mother and did not even complain for a single day for two long years. Also the meaning of family, the pandemic brought us back to the value of what families are. We are Indians and families are the most important integral unit of our lives. So that is the second journey of why can't elephants be read? Because she's full of questions. Why can't elephants be read? Why don't crabs have moustaches? Why is unicorn without a horn? A unicorn can be without a horn. Why is always this thing pink and not blue? And I think these are the questions which keep me absolutely active and involved with her and she's constantly inquiring about life. So that is the other reason 
I'm here to share with you. Keep your inquiry away, alive. Give hell to adults around you. Ask a lot of questions. Because that's the only way you will find out more about people and life and many, many things around you. And the adults will also know what you think about people around them. As a mother of two-year-old, I so well connected to you and the questions of Aku. At the same time, I think how beautifully ma'am could draw out the line and the difference. Uh, that discipline is equally important and creativity holds another space in our life. And we have to be creative at all times. Yet, that does not mean that we have to be indisciplined. I so loved that part that you said. Well, I have a very uh, kind of emotional question for you. Does this book take you back to your childhood memories? Does it recall nostalgia for you? Absolutely, it does. In the 17 long years that I worked with children all across the country when I was at drama school, one of the reasons I worked with children is that, you know, I think they are gurus who actually save us from perils of adulthood. What a child can teach, nobody else can. Because the child has no sense of manipulation of emotions. The honest questions, the inquiry, the truth, the realism, I think that and that along with innocence. They don't have, I will say this, 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 none of that remains in a child's mind. Whatever it is, the way it is, they say it. I was also that kind of a kid. I was a Pied Piper of my class. I'll tell you why I was called the Pied Piper. So because my father was a very famous academic, he was a writer, he was very popular in school because he loved young people and he was also on the governing council of the school. One time when I was in first standard, my teacher called my father and said, Dr. Tripathi, can I please meet you because I have a very interesting story to tell you about Vani. So my father said, she is always doing something or the other which creates interesting stories. Probably this is just one of the stories, you know, more about what she did, what she said. She said, no, 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 something unique is happening in class these days. So my father said, what is that? So she said, generally this teacher's class used to be after the recess break, after the tiffin break. So obviously children take time to come back, somebody wants to drink water, somebody wants to go to the washroom, etc, etc. But most of the time, long after the recess was over, there were no children in class. You know why? Because I would start telling them a story after the lunch break, and just they were pipe piper basuri bajata tha, all the kids used to walk out of the class with me, we used to go encircling the garden and I used to be telling them a story sitting there. So look what the teacher did to me. She did not get angry with me. She didn't scold me. She didn't say, why are you doing this and destroying my class? She very quietly said, Vani, calm kare. Kaani to tum bhoat achi sunati ho, mujhe bhi bada maza aata. Lekin ek calm karte hai, haan, class ho jane ke last 5-10 minutes mein, tum kaani sunao, I will also be a part of the story and then we can all go for a stroll and come back. And I think this is one of the things which make learning unique. If learning is fun, if it has an element of joy, I'm not going to talk about this word entertainment. Everything is not entertainment but lot of things can be joy, lot of things can be fun. And I think that is the most unique part about my childhood. My growing up was fun. It was full of joy. It was full of candor. My school gave me the opportunity. I'm sure like all of you in MGD have the opportunity to be fun. And you know what? I also went to a convent school which was for girls. We are very special people. We are. The kind of bond and sisterhood that we found we find in schools when we have girlfriends around us are always different from 
आई नो टूडे दर्ल्ड इज चेंज लोग कहते हैं अरे कॉलेज स्कूल में जाना चाहिए नो बड इज इंस्टिटिंग एस फ्रॉम लाइफ बट आई फाउंड अस्टरहुड विच रिमीन्स कैन यू इमेजिन मैम माई फर्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड स्कूल मेट इज स्टिल माई फ्रेंड we still are a part of each other's lives and i think this journey through college through marriage through having children working with children is something i could continue sharing with people that i grew up with it's so that is the most fascinating part of my journey it's a camaraderie you know that we build that stays forever Fantastic! I'd like to know what Mariam is editing these days. Good morning. Morning. Jenny, thank you for being here with you today. It's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, just now, we were talking about perspectives that uh, the adult man could not see, but the children could. So, what do you think? This uh, inherent, weird, imaginative capacity that children have as we grow up, does it gradually get lost somewhere, or is it existent but it's just suppressed because we don't express it? What an amazing question! So let us look life. Look at life around us. Let us look at the screen at the back. What shape is it? What is the shape of the table? What is the shape of the blackboard? What is the shape of a book? What is the general shape of a tiffin box? We live in boxes, and that is where the perspective has to be rounded. Look at the round ball of a child. What does it do? We stop bouncing around because we boxed ourselves and compartmentalized our lives so much. What will change it? As I just said, when learning is fun. Nobody is saying school is a very important entity of our lives, but the pressure of exams, competition, the rigidity that most you know institutions have i'm sure mgt is different because it's a iconic institution you know where i'm sitting today you know and there is so much co curricular there's so much joy in whatever you do but you know what what if classrooms were oval shaped what if our uh, you know bags were also round i'm just saying it's a physical reality as we grow up we get more and more boxed with things around us and what do the arts do they unbox the mind and that's exactly what i'm trying to say in the book we constantly peddle fantasies to children it's always about frozen castles pari kathas fairy tales there's nothing wrong in having fantasy but look at your own lives it's so interesting my book is about realistic writing it's about a slice it's It's actually a slice of my life with my child. It's Aku's story, and why is it interesting? People are loving it because we have stopped reading and writing about our own lives. We have we have started to uh, peddle literature or write things for children and for young people, which has nothing to do with their lives. It's all very well to be in a world of fantasy, but there's also something called realistic fantasy. अब मैं थोड़ी देर ज्यादा बोर करूंगी तो तुम सोचोगे आज टिफिन बॉक्स में मम्मा ने क्या दिया होगा पेट में तो चूहे कूद रहे हैं माइंडफुल ऑफ जॉय इज अराउंड because it will start from me and that's a story i've been telling for a long time what happened during covid 
we were doing work from home we were working on zoom calls uh, children were learning online but let's start from what the adults were doing so i want to do a 40 minute meeting i will give the child my smartphone chalo koi baat nahi beta game khel 40 second minute what happened to your screen time <laughs> what will the child turn around and say this device that you have in your hand you don't even go in the morning to the king's throne without it now you know what a king's throne is right yes, yes. i don't want to give you the gory gassy <laughs> details of what a king's throne is the point is the child will turn around and ask you are not practicing what you are preaching to me so you know what i do my phone is on silent most part of the way when akku is around me i actually start working at 9 o'clock at night because she's in bed by 8:00 that's the time i look at my phone i look at my emails and my work time starts because it doesn't snatch away the joy that i have with her otherwise it will be all hell i know there are important things to do i know sometimes there can be an emergency but the point is it's a choice you make remember the digital universe is all created by us very soon a word called artificial intelligence is going to take over our lives but tell me two things that the artificial intelligence cannot do any guesses very good tell me it, it cannot show emotion very good one more Yes, well, it can give you joy. A lot of children uh, and a lot of young people think gaming is great joy. One more thing, emotion is a very important thing. It can't imagine. Very good. So again, coming back back to what I was saying, creative imagination and imaginative realities. Who created AI? Who created AI? Human the human mind. So now the choice. is upon you whether you will allow a gadget to rule you or you will rule rule over the gadget it's very simplistically put life always gives you choices it's your choice to choose what you wish to choose and if a algorithm or a gadget or a device devised by me as a human being cannot emote cannot imagine then i should be thinking about its usage too because it's fun to imagine right and the other thing you asked is very 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 interesting i think increasingly schools are becoming places of joyful learning also because one more thing the pandemic changed it equalized the world it made you understand the meaning of life it also made you understand the meaning of judgment whether you were rich well endowed or financially unendowed everybody was sailing in the same boat during this horrible time so within those perils was an opportunity to value life and things which we take for granted joy and entertainment we must joyful things because we perceive entertainment to be that joy can you please explain it to me very simple either play football in the playground or play it on a tv screen one is joy one is entertainment choice is yours very good beautifully said if it is about the road not taken that we read it is also about the road one that one takes in life i think this is what ma'am wants to say and be happy for the road that you choose in life always very beautifully said ma'am thank you thank you nobody is saying don't play play things do things but you know what is the difference between listening to music and playing it when the string instrument is in your hands and when your finger is actually feeling it and when you feeling yeah what do you play see now you can hear a brilliant rendition by ustad zakir hussain on a 
tape recorder or on a digital, which also will give you joy. But the moment your hand will feel the, you know, the pitter patter of your, uh, you know, fingers on that device on the instrument, you know, everything that whole feeling will change. So it's you decide between the real and the virtual. You again have a choice. The choice is all yours. This is apart from the book, but we are all girls here and I have got to know that you are an activist and you have been actively working for women candidates, campaigning for them. So I would like to know we have seven decades post-independence, so how far have we come in this field of gender equality? Well, uh, it's a very <laughs> debatable question. When it comes to women representation, I will take the uh, example of Rajasthan. I think one of the states which was always uh, implicated for keeping the women back, keeping them in their gugats, and so on and so forth, got one of the first female chief ministers of the country and great pride to say this. So I think um, we have come a long way uh, in creating avenues for leadership. We are doing very well at the grassroots level, we are doing very well at the panchayat and the corporation level sector. But yes, the Indian parliament is still standing at a poor 11.5%. And I think um, we are still a democracy in progress. The process of representation is still in its uh, wake of dynamism. Also look at uh, the Honorable Maharani Gayatri Devi Ji on whose name you sit here today, what a dynamic woman leader she was. She invested the most in women's education as a woman at a time when women were mere graduates or they were not even mere graduates in the country. And I think that is a generational investment that she made today and congratulations to ma'am, you will be 80 years old next year. We are celebrating the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, which is the 75th year of our independence. You are even older than the country, right? So I think the fact that you ask me this question is the awareness that, that we require to let women lead every day. Sometimes you have to snatch it. So snatch it. Take it. Yes. Don't let the men leave, and I'm not against men. I'm not. I'm not that kind of a feminist that I will say throw them out of the room. Because we are the culture of Arjun Arishwar. The male and the female energy has to fuse together. But equalizing gender and equalizing gender parity is still something we all have to fight for. I think there is more understanding towards the needs of women, girls now. Also, I must say the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao Andolan of the country has been tremendous. I mean, full marks and great respect to our Honorable Prime Minister Narin Modi ji. And women leaders from all across the country are showing, leading the way. But I'm still saying we are a kind of a country where you need to speak to be heard. There is an old saying, na, jo dikhta hai, wo bikhta hai. So, similarly, say it out loud. I mean, they'll have to hear you. And they will. Yes, sure. Uh, is the book here? Before we open up to the questions, uh, we'll leave my mail ID with you. Absolutely. Do you promise me that? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic! Sara breakfast bar again. Finally. <laughs> Our students are also doing a small story writing activity oh. this year as a part of English activity. So most of them have come up with their own stories and one class per section. They have their individual story they have illustrated, written. Fantastic. So, you know, and uh, they kind of compiled the entire story. So Very good. Absolutely. So finally the book is here and I can read a chapter. I'll tell you this chapter is unique. It's called I Love Art. 
So what me and Adku generally do even otherwise, she has very long hours of school, she leaves at 8 in the morning, she comes back uh, only by 4.30. But she's tired and yet he, she wants to paint with me. You know, my friends in the middle, Please bear with me. Thank you. Theater wale hai na, audience ki last row tak nahi dekha. Agar drishti nahi gai, to phir maza nahi. And this chapter is also unique because my dear senior Paresh Raval ji read it in the first launch of the book. We've already done about eight cities. I'm in the ninth city today. And somehow, every single person ended up choosing this chapter to read. My other friend Divya Dutta, who's also a famous actor, read it in Mumbai and so on. So this is called I Love Art. So one of the things I absolutely love is a large big chart paper where I can go mad with colors. Now that scribbling is slowly turning into shapes and patterns, a monkey can have a brown tail, I know that now. A tiger can have black stripes within the yellow, I know that now. But you know what I'm struggling with? I'm struggling with a parrot which is multicolored. Now don't laugh at me. There is a fascinating story which Mama has been telling me. The story is about Chintu, a monkey who wanted to steal the red cap of a passerby. He would throw stones and fruits at that person and carry off that little red cap. Similar things are happening around me. You know why? I'm going crazy with colors. I like to actually steal the colors, one from the other. I'm not just satisfied with a yellow and an orange. When I mix them together, a brand new color emerges. And that's the fun part. I have become a little better with actually putting the color right inside the drawing. Slowly I'm learning to color within the line or inside the circle or keep it inside the border of the drawing, but sometimes it still spills out. I like to draw various things. It's not just circles, shapes and animals. I love to draw the window in my room. There are so many trees outside. One thing Mama used to say while feeding me when I was little, building, 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 building. I never understood what that meant. But you know now, there are so many buildings outside my window. The moment I look outside those buildings, I really feel like drawing them. I'm also trying to decide what a, a non-red Mickey Mouse can mean. A red elephant, what that can mean. It's a fascinating story that Mama once told me. I was actually, it was a play in which she used to act when she was working in the National School of Drama. The story was about a red elephant. There was a little boy who was very good at art. One day he went to his art class and he drew a red elephant, but he failed in that. The art teacher told him, how can elephants be red? They are grey, they are black, they are at most white. But the little boy argued, no, my elephant is red. You know what happened? The moment he said his elephant was red, there were various other children in the class who started to say, my elephant is green, mine is yellow, and mine is blue. This totally baffled the teacher. It took a while for the teacher to understand that all of us can have an imaginary friend who actually could be an elephant. And that, might, that friend might not be the same color that you see in real life because they just belong to you. You are the ones who communicate with those little elephants or those animals or those trees or those pictures. Since they are a part of your own being, they take the shape and the color of your imagination. The story of the red elephant has always stayed with me. Will you sing with me one line of this song? La 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 hathi hu me La 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 hathi hu me One more time La 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 
हाथी हूँ मैं द सॉन्ग इज फ्रॉम द प्ले इन विच ममा एक्टेड and she says the moment the elephant used to come alive all the children will start clapping so i am also breaking a few rules these days you know i'm trying to paint a green cat or a blue cow <laughs> well that is just so wonderful it's so wonderful to me because what is close to me is also most precious to me. So remember one thing never lose your imagination because before you know it there will be other people who will start defining it for you thank you we are now open for questions from the audience please raise your hand if you wish to ask anything Also tell me, also tell me your name. Yes, sir. Next. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Tanika, and I have a question for you. When we stare at clouds, we see shapes and figures, and sometimes mythical creatures. If you remember some particular figures that you used to see in the clouds when you were young, I always used to see a mountain because I'm basically a Pahadi, and for me. thinking of mountains sitting in the congested city of delhi you know with so much traffic around me constantly i used to uh, you know think of the mountains and i used to also think that the mountain has these clouds which are you know rolling uh, across the peak of the mountain that was one shape i used to constantly what a lovely question thank you thank you, thank you sir good morning ma'am i am samya Uh, ma'am, we all want to know how to organize our ideas when we begin to write the story. Actually, don't try organizing ideas. The best way to write a story is let it flow. And if it's not flowing, stop. Don't force yourself to write. Because I think writing is like singing a song or composing it. It's going to happen on its own. But if you really have like a task at hand and you have to write, then first. write the basic idea of the story like there was a boy he used to live in a big city so get the broad stroke of the idea write it down and you know the story will on its own emerge but most important never force to write because if it will be forced it will be unreal and you won't enjoy it that much thank you thank you good morning ma'am i'm sarinya ma'am Uh, who is your current favorite author and why what is the reason you like their novels so you know um i don't have just a current author i have many many authors but because both my parents are hindi and sanskrit scholars one person that i really enjoy how many of you know mahadevi verma wow and i think she was a path breaking poetess who was writing at a time when women were not supposed to be authors in india and she spoke about self uh, you know herself and the journey which was called chayavat yes. so obviously for me eternally she remains one of the biggest poetesses of india and i have rediscovered her over the years so one journey i'll share with you which you can also try try reading a book that you really like when you are in grade 4 revisit it in grade 7 read it again in grade 10 with each passing year your interpretation of that same lovely piece of literature who you love most will also change and i think you will find deeper meanings into what you like in terms of contemporary indian writing i really like um, lot of indian authors like geeta shri who got the big booker prize this year uh, tombs of sand red samadhi and i also like to read hindi literature a lot because one it gives you a sneak peek into contemporary india angrezi padhna bahut aasan hai hum school mein bhi khoob angrezi bolte bhi hain padhte bhi hain lekin mujhe lagta hai ki apne desh ko aur apne samaj ko samajhne ke liye hame apni bhasha ke prati 
we should be very connected. So I, I also try to read a lot of contemporary uh, this. And another author which I absolutely admire and uh, feel very, very connected to is Amitabh Ghosh. Because I think he really writes stuff which is in Indian yet pan, 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 uh, 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 pan global in its content. I mean, you could be sitting anywhere in the world and you really would like it. Thank you. That's a very good question. Good morning, ma'am. I am Kashmi. Ma'am, my question is like, how we come up with the idea of writing story books? This is a very good question, Kashmi. I actually did not write this book. The book found me. So when I was in Delhi, as I told you, with my mother, I kept seen by writing. Everything around me was looking so dismal and I was feeling so low generally and not being with Akku and looking at my mother who was feeling so unwell at that time. I never even thought this will become a book which will be published. And full marks to my publisher, I want to tell you a little about Trisha Niyogi of Niyogi Books. During the lockdown one day when it opened a little, I went to, there's a lovely place called India International Centre to have a cup of chai. It was totally empty. I was the only person sitting in the tea lounge. So Trisha came to meet me just to say hello to me and she started saying, how do you pass your day? I said, I have so much work. I have to look after the house, I'm cleaning, I'm cooking, I'm doing everything alone. She said, what else are you doing? I said, nothing, I'm just scribbling something. Because she said, publishers ki kaan khade ho gaye. What are you scribbling? I said, I'm just writing something. I'm just writing something, how Akshara must be spending her time. Show it to me. I said, it's not worth publishing. It's all personal rant. And I actually thought I've written personal rant in this book. I thought nobody's going to understand why I've written this book. Who wants to know about a two and a half year old girl who's, you know, spending time with her family? I thought nobody is going to identify with this. I didn't want to publish it. So seriously, it's an organic journey. And today being in Jaipur, thanks to my dear friend Apra, your Apra Jija, and of course, uh, ma'am, the principal ma'am, it's taken an organic journey of its own. I'm in various cities. People call me. They said, we've learned about the book. We want to know about the book. We want you to come and read, read, read a chapter from the book. So at least this book, I can say, has found me. Broad stroke, how do you find stories? Again, stories will find you. We are a land of kathavachaks. Every nook and corner of this country is a story, as I said. This school is a story. Your classroom is a story. Your tiffin break is a story. Your playground is a story. Your interpersonal relationships are a story. The fear of exams is a story. I can go on and on. If you really feel like writing, ma'am ma was just telling me that you are in the middle of a project where you are all illustrating and writing stories. Yeah. Find stories close to home. Find stories about your own self. Find stories about your friends. Find stories about people around you. I think there's nothing more real than that. And you know what? When you're done with it and you will revisit it, you will be surprised at what all things you actually wrote down. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. What is that one imagination of your childhood that you wish to come to? Wow. There are so many things. <laughs> um, I think I always wanted to have a kid. And I always wanted to have a girl child. And when uh, my child was going to be born, I actually threatened the doctor. It better be a girl. She said, Tum to aise kar ho, jase pata mere upar hai. How would I even know? Somewhere deep down, you know, the feel of having a female, a little girl energy around you is something I always, you know, uh, wanted. And finally, God gave me that, you know. And such a such an amazing child, you know. She's She's so many, in so many ways, she gives me strength each day. And I'm sure all of you all give strength to your parents each day. And that is what matters the most. And celebration time that we are in a room full of so much female energy around us. So one round of applause to you all.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, pardon. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Krishika. And my question for you is, what's the current payment normal and what all reviews will you give to that normal? Right now is, um, I don't read one book at a time. I read three. But uh, just as I told you, The Great Samadhi by Gita Shri, uh, uh, Tomb of Sand, which got the International Booker Prize, is my review. I mean, it's an extraordinary book. And you know, I'll just give you a little sneak peek. It's about a patriarch of a large Indian family, a woman. She is not a matriarch, she is a literal patriarch. And the way she rediscovers life as she grows older and rests. I think it's a book we all should be reading. Thank you for that question. Well, one book is a little prince. It's a Bible. I always say it's a Bible of understanding our own minds. Huh? I'll tell you what the first chapter is. This child draws a big large figure of like a half oval with a line. Somebody takes that to an adult and the adult says, it's a hat. You know what the child says? It's a boa constrictor which has been eaten up by a snake. Now, can you even imagine? This is the imaginative reality of children, of young people. Little Prince. Another book, I don't know if you've ever uh, seen it. Uh, it's called Toto Chan. So, we did a production of Toto Chan. And look at the escapades of Toto-chan in a war-torn Japan, a school which is in a railway bogey. Huh? And of course, the bird singing outside is more interesting than the class itself. That is what she says. And in Indian writing, I think there are very beautiful books. Um, of course, I love Mahadevi Verma's poetry, but they may, may be a little dense sometimes for you all. But there is a book called Aapka Banti. You know, you should read that. Then there is there are few stories by Jayashankar Prasad ji. One is called Madhua, one is called Bedi. I think those stories really encapsulate childhood and how we are as children and of course what the world around us does to us, you know. So, uh, I'm sure you like Archie comics. I'm sure you like comic books. There's a new spate of graphic novels which have become very popular. And um, uh, I think the Ramayana and the Mahabharat is now in a very interesting graphic novel form with like, like a comic book. It's easy read, it's very interesting and rest I think you will find your own interest as to what you like to read. I mean for me I revisit books as I say every three years because I think the perspective of reading a book changes with time. Thank you so much. Aprajira and Madam Principal to do the formal launch of Why Can't Elephants Be Red? Yes, please. Some more copies of the book in our school library. I request you to please visit the library and read the book and do as promised to Miss Vani. You'll write a review of the book and share with her. When will we ever see the we must only be to feel the freedom of our humanity? For in this great land we share a home, and in this great love a family. 
Yes, of course. Uh, so it is. It was absolutely a delightful session. Do you agree with me? Yes, ma'am. I am interested in your takeaways. So it's not just that it stops here. It is a what? What do you take back with you when you go out of this evening? Can you tell me something? Just words, phrases. What is it? Yes. Ma'am, I have been creative about creativity. Creativity. Imagination. So you have creativity, you have imagination, as she said, as the conversation went on. But the thing is to retain that creativity and bring out that imagination. Don't get yourself be boxed, as she said. Don't put yourself. Although the school, we all try that all the time. That is one part of your life. The other part is the creative part, which should continue life long. And this, remember this. Lal lal hathi. Why can't elephants be red? So this is a symbolic statement for everything that you face, that you do, that you read, that question it. That why does it have to be like this? Why it should not be like this? Keep questioning. And as she said, very rightly said, keep questioning your teachers. Don't step back and they say, "Keep ma'am ne kaha to bas ho gaya," ya "mummy ne bola to aisa ho gaya," "papa ne bola to waise hi ho gaya." वो सब बोलते हैं सही बोलते हैं बट योर इनपुट योर क्रिएटिविटी योर थॉट्स आर इक्वली इम्पॉर्टेंट डू यू अग्री विद मी कीप दैट क्रिएटिव बेंट ऑफ माइंड इन फैक्ट योर एंटायर लाइफ दैट वॉज वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग द सेकेंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्विकली आई जस्ट टेक दैट यू बिकॉज आई फील दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग द क्वेश्चन अबाउट वीमेन्स प्रोग्रेस इन ऑल दीज इयर्स um we spoke we keep talking about gender equality and we have to uh, you know step out of our uh, uh, the environments the, the closed environments that we grow up in who is responsible for that beti bachao beti padhao ye sab to kon kar rahe hain most of the men are doing it sab jitne bhi plans bante hain planning hoti hai all mostly it is the male members of the society who are planning it but what are you doing for yourself that is important and i'll bring out a very small little thing that you people if you want emancipation if you want empowerment you have to support each other that is important you have to support each other and it starts right from class 1 2 3 because right from class 1 2 3 for as you grow up You keep shaming each other. तुम काली है तुम मोटी है तुम पतली है तुम ऐसे क्यों करती है तेरे बाल कैसे You keep doing it. Do, a, uh, do you agree with me? Yes. You do it and you face it. This kind of mentality keeps on building up and then you will not get out of your uh, closed myopic thoughts. So you have to support yourself. You have to open your minds. first of all accept the way you all are accept that all we all are women we are made this way we are like this right and support each other do not keep pointing fingers at each other because this is the male mindset male mindset dala hua hai ki gori hai to sundar aur dark color hai to sundar nahi hai isn't that a mindset yes aap logo ke ghar mein bhi kitni baar ye baatein hoti hai you have to get out of it you have to break that chain of thought nobody else will come and do it for you so you have to take the lead all right yes all right so thank you once again vani great thank you thank you session thadi thank you thank you apra ma'am thank you ma'am i thank the students to please remain seated until further instructions What color your elephant?